I was just driving down the road, listening to some music, not paying attention, and I turned down a road I normally wouldn't have turned down. And the sun was up, so it was nice and bright. It wasn't twilight, it wasn't, you know, dawn, it was a little more than that. And as I crested this small bridge, something caught my eye on the left side. I saw this figure coming out of the corn stalks and heading. Actually, it was kind of heading toward me, but not looking at me. It was like on a mission to the creek. This is the Crypto Creature Show. I am Brian, and with me as always is my co-host, Todd. What's up, buddy? Brian, you're not going to believe this, man, but we've got another Indiana Bigfoot encounter coming on today. What? Another Indiana, Indiana Bigfoot? Another Indiana wow. Bigfoot. Wow. I think we've breaking this, we're breaking the record with this with our state here. I can't I believe this. I think we are, man. I had no idea that 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 much was going on in Indiana. I know. Before we started this, we could have called. We could have started the Indiana Bigfoot podcast. Probably as many as we've gotten <laughs> so far. We're gonna bring Patty on. Patty lives down there outside of south of Indianapolis, and uh, she had a Bigfoot, I guess, cross her in the street, and some other people close by, and I guess there's some other stuff going on down there. So. Really? Strangeness. Well, let's, let's, strangeness. Let's find out what's going on down there. Right yonder. on. We'll get her on and see what's going on. Ready? Yep. Let's get her. Hello. Good. How are you guys? Good. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Thanks for talking to us this morning, Patty. No problem. You are in Indiana, just just like us, correct? Yes, that is correct. And oh, Hey, neighbor. Yeah. yeah. And your encounters, experiences happen in Indiana as well. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and start and tell us what you experienced and what happened to you? Okay. Um, from the year about 91 through 97, um, we lived in a farmhouse out in the middle of nowhere in Shelby County. Um, my husband worked for a large production hog farm. So the house that we lived in um, was part of his salary. So we lived there for, like I said, six, six seven years. And... Uh, the house was surrounded by nothing but cornfields. It's just thousands of acres of either corn, soybeans, uh, tomatoes. And so on three sides, we were always surrounded by fields. Well, through the back uh, field, about two or 300 yards was a big um, set of woods. And a lot of time woods out in the country will separate property lines or creeks. And so this was a, just a large wooded area. Um, we had a few animals ourselves on our little farm. We had some hogs and a couple sheep and some goats. We were big into 4-H and, and with the kids. So a couple nights I had went outside to feed when my husband wasn't home and I heard this screaming in the backwoods. Um, really weird. It wasn't a coyote. We, we had horses as well. And so we had seen some coyotes, um, but it wasn't that type of type of noise whatsoever. Um, I asked my husband's boss who owned all that property and had for generations, his family and asked him if he had ever heard anything like that. And he said he had not. Um, and that he had never seen any bobcats out there. I don't think there were bobcats out there in the nineties. I think they're slowly introducing their way back down this area. But back then I don't, I don't think it was a bobcat. So that's kind of where we lived in the situation that we were in. And I had three kids. So I had one that was a senior in high school during this time, or actually in high school, and then two younger ones. They're about 10 or 11 years apart. So one morning, my daughter, she had her own car. She went to school. And then I was taking my two sons to the babysitter, which is through the country, two or three miles away. And I dropped the kids off at the sitter, and I was heading to work. I worked in downtown Indianapolis. We were about 25 miles outside of Indianapolis um, in Shelby County. So I was just driving down the road, listening to some music, not paying attention. And I turned down a road I normally wouldn't have turned down. I'd been down that road before, but it's not the one I would have. I would have normally turned on county line and I didn't. So I turned a mile too soon and was just going down the road. And I crossed the little bridge and the sun was up. I would say it was about 630 and the sun was up and 630, quarter seven. 
So it was nice and bright. It wasn't twilight. It wasn't, you know, dawn. It was a little more than that. And as I crested this small bridge, something caught my eye on the left side. So I saw a figure. This was in October 1996. The crops were harvested, at least in that area. Um, and it was corn. So there were corn stalks, maybe a foot, two foot tall that had, it was nothing but corn stalks. And I saw this figure coming out of the corn stalks and heading. Actually, it was kind of heading toward me, but not looking at me. It was like on a mission to the creek because I, the bridge was uh, over a creek, Sugar Creek, actually. And I got to witness this for about eight seconds. I would say eight to 10 seconds because between the cornfield and the creek, I would estimate maybe 80 yards, but it was coming towards me. So by the time it got out of the field, went through the, the cornfield, went through the grassy area and hit the creek, it was probably about 50, 60 yards from me. So I couldn't see any definal uh, or definite features in the face, but I knew it wasn't a farmer. I knew it wasn't a hunter. Um, the shape was completely different. Farmers, it, at least in our area, if you're driving down the road and you see, see a farmer out in the field, whether they look at you or not, they usually raise their hand. They're like, hey, and then you just keep going. And so it wasn't a farmer. It didn't have orange for a hunter. I think I don't know the hunting season in Indiana, but this was late October, mid to late October. So that was my uh, sighting with that. And um, it, it just surprised me. It, I don't think it really well, scared yeah. me, um, but I just didn't know what it was. It just, mm -hmm. at that time, I'm like, am I seeing, is that really what I'm seeing? And um, I didn't tell anybody. I, I went straight to work, didn't tell anybody. Uh, later on, I did tell my husband and he doesn't believe in anything like that. And he's like, okay, whatever. And then a few years went by and I did tell my daughter and she believed me, but then it just didn't really come up. And um, it, it, at the time, it never really entered my mind that it was, it was a Bigfoot. I had only seen one Bigfoot um, advertisement or magazine back in probably 1970. My parents had a magazine and Patty was on it. Oh. I never thought anything about it. Um, that was in California. We're far from California. Yeah. It never even dawned on me that I would ever see something like this in the farmlands of, you know, South Central Indiana. Us too. We we when we started this, we didn't have a clue how many sightings there are in Indiana, but we've had quite a few on the show. Uh, there's a lot. Probably a more than, as many yeah. as any other state, if not wow. more. Except for Washington and Oregon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was your first thoughts when this thing kind of ran across in front of you? I mean, what was going through well, your mind? Were you freaking I, out? Yeah. Well, kinda, because I, I'm not. I was kind of. Um, I think we, as we were talking before, when I was younger. My brothers and sisters call me, you know, scaredy cat because I didn't like watching scary shows. I didn't like to be scared. I didn't like the dark. Um, so it did kind of freak me out a little bit because I didn't really know what I was seeing, but I knew it wasn't a person. It wasn't shaped like a person. Um, it, and it just all the way to work. I was like, did I really see that? Did I really see that? And of course, like I said, I didn't want to tell anybody. Um, they just I just didn't. I just thought they would think I was a nut. So I was, I was amazed at what I was seeing. I wasn't sure what I was seeing. I just knew it was not a person. It just, it, no way, shape or form was this creature a person. So after you put this all together and, and kind of realized what it was, or did you realize, yeah, I saw a Bigfoot afterwards? I didn't, I, I don't know really what I thought. I think I just put it out of my mind and it stayed out of my mind for years. And then about back in, this past September, October, um, I work at a place where I can wear earbuds and listen to podcasts all day long. So I was listening to some crime podcasts. That's what I usually listen to. And I don't know if it was an advertisement or somebody talked about it, but they talked about your podcast. So really? I thought, cool. well, I'm going to download that and check that out. So once I really started listening to the stories, it ba brought back that memory of Maybe that's what I really did see. Maybe it wasn't my imagination, um, that type of thing. So I was glad I came across your podcast. It's great. Thank Pretty you. much all I listen to. And um, so with that being said, this past 
November, I had a little get together at my house, just immediate family, my three children, grandchildren. And it was my grandson's birthday actually. And I made a comment to my daughter. I said, if his birthday wasn't today, I would have loved to gone down to Kentucky. They were having some kind of um, Bigfoot convention there this past um, November. I don't remember the name or the city, but, and my daughter said, oh, I'd love to go with you. That'd be great. And then my two sons look at me like I'm crazy because I never told them. I'd only told my daughter. Um, like I said, there's 10 years between my first and my second. So she was a lot more mature when all this happened. But I never told my sons. And they looked at me like I had a third head. And they're like, are you kidding me? You, you believe in Bigfoot? And I'm like, well, yeah. So with that being said, my daughter said, Mom, I, got, I have this text I want to send you. She said this was from my friend in high school. And it is um, about the same thing you saw in a you know different fashion. And Todd, I sent you that text. And I didn't know if you wanted me to read it or if you would like to read it. Go ahead. Okay. I got to pull it up on my phone here. You have a better speaking voice than I do anyway. So oh, I don't think so, but thank you. No. What platform do you listen to a podcast on? Just curious. iHeartRadio. Okay. Must be putting out commercials for us on there, Brian. Uh, yeah, because I would have never found Which it without cool. something on there. Because, I, of course, I don't pay for it, so it comes with ads. So. Right. Okay, let me see. Okay, so to put this in perspective, this happened just a few months before my sighting, about a mile away. Hmm. My sighting was uh, on 1100. Her sighting was on 1200, also known as County Line Road, because it it breaks between Shelby County and Hancock County. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and read this. And this is from my daughter's friend. I used to live in the Lakeview neighborhood, which technically had a new Palestine address. It's about a city block south of the county line during the summer of 1996, shortly after we graduated. I was with one of our classmates driving west on county line. It was during the morning twilight, dark enough to need headlights, but getting light. We came up on a corn patch that had a clearing. She was driving and I was in the passenger seat. The headlights hit this thing. I got a really good look at it. It wasn't any animal I had ever seen. It was man-sized, stood on two legs, and seemed to be eating a small animal, a fox, rabbit, cat, or something. It had long fingers and was kind of bent over holding the animal. Then it looked up, right at me. Its eyes glowed like a cat's would only it had a reddish tint to it. It was terrifying. She floored it and we hightailed it away. Neither one of us looked back and we've only told a few people about it. Who would believe it? We would. Yes. And that really validated what I had seen back in 1996. Uh, hers, like I said, was a few months prior. It appeared to be in the summer. So mine was in the fall, mile, mile and a half apart. So it just... I, I can't believe that we were the only two people. Now, granted, this back in 97 and, and 91 and the time I lived in that area, it was pretty sparse. There's some new neighborhoods out there now, but you would go for miles and barely see a house. The road I lived on was three miles long with only five or six houses on it. Um, the hog farm was about two miles away. So I just can't believe we're the only two people that would see well, this. Well, that doesn't, just because good. nobody said anything doesn't necessarily mean that you're the only two that's seen it. It right. Means other people are like you and they didn't want to tell anybody You're because true. they'll be, you know, called crazy or whatever. So maybe if this gets out and people, when this gets out and people hear your story, they'll start to come forward. I hope that's so. What, that's our hope yeah, for this show. True. Absolutely true. And you guys aren't far. Uh, South of Indianapolis, but you're not real far south of Indianapolis, are you? We're not. We're not at all. I'm surprised you're as close as you are. We talk about Brown County and and that down there south of Indianapolis, and there's a lot of sightings that go on down there. But you guys aren't in Brown County. You're not really. No, we are next to it. of Indianapolis. Yeah. So where you're at, no one would ever think. My gosh, there's no way there's a Bigfoot there. That's right outside of a big city, major a city. major city. Yeah. Right, right. And and as soon as you get out of the city limits, it turns kind of rural mm -hmm. and then just gets mm -hmm. more rural, more rural, of course. Yeah. And that so, is how, and that's how Indiana is. You, you're in a, a city, a town, and then boom, you next thing you know, in some country road and there's woods all around you yeah, and, and fields all the around you. And yeah, <laughs> it's just yeah. a miss, but you know, we always thought Bigfoot in Indiana, maybe down South, definitely not up North. Maybe. 
But but if they're in Michigan, and if they're in Southern Indiana, and Ohio, they got to be somewhere in between too, right? I mean, that makes that's sense. Great. We camp yeah, a lot in Brown County and Monroe County and Morgan County. That's all down south. Uh, in fact, I'm getting ready to go to the boat sport and travel show. Look at some campers. Nice. Uh, we've camped on and off there for years and years, ever since the children were little. And I never even thought to even be more observant to look for anything. I mean, we were down there to fish and have fun with the kids and cook on the campfire and, and that type of thing. And, and this makes me t- want to be more uh, observant when I go down there. We don't no. backwoods camp. We camp in usually the state parks, that type of thing, McCormick Creek and Brown County State Park. And, um, but I think I'll be more observant. I mean, we, we hike a few of the little trails and that kind of thing. So yeah, that's what we try to, we try to tell everybody if you're out there, if you're camping, if you're just hiking or whatever, just pay attention to your surroundings. Right. Listen, which I never did look, before. Really. Yeah. Me either. I, I regret. I, not I never it. did either. <laughs> and, but now yeah. I do. Yeah. I'm going to start as well. I could have heard wood knocks or whoops and not to thought two things about it back then in the yeah. day before this, before I got into this, you know, and right, maybe we right. did. Yeah, we probably did. I normally, I like to bird watch as well. So I'm normally out there just looking for birds and nothing else. So I'll just be more observant for this in the future. Did you ever tell your sons what happened to you? Well, I did that day. And this was just recent. Like I said, this previous November. And they, um, I don't think they believe me. Although my son, my youngest son, uh, he's 32 now, listens. He started listening to your podcast just to see what I was listening to. Mm -hmm. Now, my older son, he could care less. Uh, Whether he believes me or not, he doesn't make fun of me or anything like that. I just don't think they believe it. Uh, My my youngest son said, I'm 32 years old, and I never knew my mom was crazy. (laughs) But he was kidding. Um, Whether he believes me or not, um, he got me some nice Bigfoot socks for Christmas, so I'm okay with that. But um, next Saturday is a Bigfoot... At, in Martinsville, which that's, I believe, in Morgan County, south of me, um, is a Bigfoot at the library. They're having like a little Bigfoot seminar. So he's really? going to go with me. Oh, cool. So we're going to go to that. I've not been to anything like that before. And I don't know if it's a reading or if it's um, witnesses, but, um, you know, it's about 45 minutes from me. So we're going to head down there next Saturday. That's pretty cool. So what's your husband saying about this now is he is he believing at all is he just still kind of like whatever um he believes me now and uh actually like if i'm doing dishes or clean the kitchen i'll have a podcast on i'll be listening to it and he said is that all you listen to now i said well i'm kind of hooked on it but he doesn't mind he doesn't I, i'm sure he believes me i'm, I'm most certainly believes me he just wants to see it with his own eyes you know he's he's just an old-time farmer and he's just like i've never seen it and i've lived out here from you know my whole life and um and i didn't move out here so i was like 12 so and you know we always had animals and he said i've never seen anything around there except for coyotes and foxes and that type of thing but it is what it is well, they've they've probably seen him out farming and watched him plenty of times without him knowing oh, him, i'm sure, I'm sure. Mm. absolutely on a tractor on you know thousands of acres that he would you know mm-hmm. either till or harvest or spread manure or whatever he did and uh you're, you're probably right like i said you'll go for miles with cornfields and then you'll see a huge patch of woods uh either separating property a creek running through it so people think central Lane has really nothing but cornfields but it's more than that you've got a lot of areas that's wooded here in this in this uh, central indiana central south when you saw this thing you said it was by a bridge right Yes, it was by uh, I, right over Sugar Creek. I just crested the bridge. It caught my eye to the, like at 10 o'clock, I slowed down. And I wasn't going fast anyway. Mm-hmm. I slowed down and watched it take some huge steps from the cornfield through the little greeny, grassy area and into the creek line. Now, that creek line, the picture I sent you, was a little more wooded. And, of course, it had leaves on it. Um, I sent you the one I took a picture yesterday, and it's course dead of winter so there's nothing on it so even though it was october the leaves hadn't fallen yet there were still still some leaves and it just ducked in that once it you know went through the grassy area it just ducked right into that tree line next to the creek it just looked like a dark figure but like a deep dark brown i can't say it was actually black black 
Um, I think it was more like dark brunette, dark brown. And uh, I didn't really see any like long hanging hair or anything like that. And it wasn't huge. I hear about these stories that say they're eight, nine, ten foot tall. And it wasn't like that. It was more like six and a half, seven larger than I knew that, than most men are, but not as large as some of the ones of the stories and some of the pictures I've seen. Yeah, you had mentioned uh, being over the bridge. And the reason I asked was because I believe, I think we believe, Brian, too, that these things travel rivers and creeks when the they do travel mm -hmm. as much okay. as possible. If there's not a lot of brush coverage, like the state of Indiana, there's a lot of fields, you know, but there's a lot of rivers. And along those rivers, you find trees and brush and all that. And I think they travel those rivers and use those for coverage. Mm -hmm. I wonder why he went over the bridge instead of under the bridge. Maybe it was low. I don't know. Um, but he was right. just kind of, I think he was following that creek and just kind of had to pop over the road to get to the other side and keep going. And that's happened when you just come along. And also, probably Absolutely. not just for coverage, but for also food, because all the animals got to drink too, right? So they're going to the water source too. Right, right, right. And I do going. see, I mean, there's a lot of, uh, you know, possums and raccoons and foxes when you live out this way. You, we see them. And especially when I would go to work, it would be um, just getting dawn or maybe a little later than that. And you'd see them pop across the road. Um, so I'm sure there was plenty for him to eat heading toward that bridge. I'm wondering if right. areas where people are seeing sightings, if people put cameras up or just kind of monitored the creek and riverbeds and watched sooner or later, someone's going to see something running through there. Right, you know? right. I, I thought one of the odd things as well was the similarities <laughs> between my daughter's um, friend that texted that to her was she said she came through a corn patch. So, you know, I saw my sighting in a corn patch. Of course, mine was um, harvested as well already. I believe if hers happened in the summer, it, right after they graduated, which would have been the end of May, beginning of June, it had to have been a very small corn patch because it hadn't reached maturity. But she saw hers come, you know, out of a corn patch as well. So mm -hmm. I thought that was very, um, try to put the similarities together. Yeah, you know they use corn too, full-grown corn. Oh, around here, yeah, coverage. a lot they of have animals to. do. Yeah. Also, it could have been a, a juvenile, could have been a younger one that you saw. Yeah, it could have been. They're and normally the makes, ones that get caught. <laughs> it yeah. just makes me think back and remember that uh, the house that we lived in. That was, you know, every few years they rotate the crops, and so sometimes if it would be cornfield. It was about two to three acres, our our land was, and then cornfields would be on all three sides of us. And then of course, a little country road in front. And we would have get togethers and we'd play out in the corn and I mean, we were all adults. We'd have a big bonfire. My daughter would hop on her horse and ride through the cornfields. And now it makes me think back what was in there. It was midnight. I mean, you know, we had parties and stuff like that. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. what in the world could have been in there? Why we're all playing hide and seek and coming out a road a mile away and um, had a lot of fun doing that. But makes me stop and think now. Yeah. What could have been playing hide and seek with you? Exactly. <laughs> I, I didn't have any fear then, but. I don't think I'd go in a cornfield now. <laughs> <laughs> that was 27, you know. Yeah. Oh, 30. we used to run through cornfields all the time. Yeah. yeah. I would say that there's probably a lot of footprints out there in some cornfields and some creek beds if people would go out and look. If Maybe. actually people would get out, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure there is. Brian, let's pick a river this summer and let's just walk it and look for footprints. Yeah. What do you say? No. We've got a couple good rivers here in our county. Um, there's Brandywine Creek, which is huge. And mm -hmm. then we have Buck Creek, which is, you know, pretty big. Um, years ago, back in the 80s, I lived literally right on the creek on Brandywine. Of course, I did. I mean, I didn't see anything besides some herons and birds and some foxes, stuff like that. But I wasn't looking for anything either. And nothing happened that I saw. And we were like right on the creek. I lived there from 87 to 91, actually, when we moved to the other side of the county. Um, but I, I never saw anything. And that was my husband's grandparents' house, and they had lived there for years. And as far as I know, they didn't see anything. So you're not scared when you go out camping, though? Are you are you a little afraid? to? You say you go out camping still and, and everything. Do you ever... Well, now I'm kind of leery just because of <laughs> listening to <laughs> <laughs> listening to you guys <laughs> and a couple other podcasts, um, you know, starting last fall. I'm not, I don't know, I'm not really scared. I guess that'll happen, you know. The last time we went camping, we have a camper as well, and it was October 31st, and it was around that time I started listening to your your podcast. So we'll see what the spring brings. I've got already got a couple of reservations yeah. for Brown County, 
and um, okay. Morgan County. So we'll see what the spring brings for doing just that. Remember, just pay attention to your surroundings. Listen. Absolutely. Although I don't hear much about state park. I mean, I do, but well, that's where most of the sightings right happen. Are the way in the middle of nowhere. And like I said, we don't, we don't off-road camp. We, we're state park campers and that kind of thing. So I, I don't know what the chance would be, but maybe it's higher that's, than everything. That's where a lot of our encounters come from, state parks. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah, and game yeah. preserves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have a better chance in an area like that to see one than you do, say, yeah, out because in the you can't, Pacific you can't Northwest. hunt there. So a lot of people also go out when they go hiking, like me, squatching. Mm -hmm. You know, you hike down a trail about a mile, maybe two miles, something like that. But you got to really get way, way deep out there in the middle of it, mm -hmm. you know. Gotcha. Yeah, we were just talking for. to somebody about that on the last, was it the last interview we did? Or? I believe so, yeah. yeah. But like, like your sighting, you know, these things are coming down more. They're probably digging through uh, dumpsters and everything. Mm -hmm. Corn. You know, that's why you're probably seeing, yeah, getting corn. Mm -hmm. It's probably, probably seeing them and say, hey, we can take this creek better, fill all these cornfields. We can get right up to the back of this place. We can get all the food we want, all this dumpster, what have you. And those are the ones that people are seeing as they're coming and going from probably Brown County area. Right. I think they travel pretty far in a day's time if they want to. Oh, I think so. I imagine. But you definitely want to see one again, you think, Patty? Not up close. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> after hearing some of the scenarios um, and the temperaments, you know what I mean? I wouldn't want it to be uh, one of the violent ones or, you know, cranky ones. Um, I wouldn't mind yeah. seeing one from afar, uh, but I don't think I want to see one up close. Like I said, a lot of years have passed, but I'm still the scaredy cat on the inside <laughs> i think we all would be yeah also i think it's like any other wild animal if you see one you can pretty much guarantee there's probably another close so again just pay attention to your surroundings yeah, yeah absolutely absolutely well you had something else happen to you interesting didn't you patty i did okay. i did um back in 1981 i was uh, a passenger riding with a friend of mine we're heading towards indianapolis we were on i-74 up in Shelby County, and um, it was about dusk, really pretty pink sky, and I saw this huge light. It was like, like it was really far away, um, really bright, bright light. So I said to my friend, what is that? And he said, I think it's a plane. We're heading towards Indianapolis and right, you know, west, and the airport's west of Indianapolis. And I said, I don't think that's a plane. And he said, no, nope, I think it's a plane. So I just I was just watching it when a few miles went by and all of a sudden the um, light zipped to the right, zipped to the left, zipped to the right. Just, you know, looked like a few inches. Of course, we were far away and then zipped to the left and was gone in an instant. And I said, that was no plane. And he <laughs> said, maybe right. And um, and we kind of left it at that. And I just thought, you know, UFOs weren't really big back in the 80s, but or at least to me, they weren't. And I said, yeah, they were. maybe that was a UFO. And he said, that's not a UFO. It was, I don't know what it was. So I was validated because the next morning when I turned on the news, hundreds of people had saw this. Wow. So that made, that really validated me, you know, back, that was way before phones and computers and all that basically. Yeah. So everybody mm -hmm. called the news station, called the, you know, the airport and everybody had seen this and some way closer than I saw. I was still 20, 25 miles away but that was a nice validation yeah so what'd you guys That's say to each other after he just he just didn't he didn't necessarily believe me i don't even know if i believe myself i just i just knew it wasn't a plane and so that's when i said it's a ufo and he goes ah you know most people don't believe in that i mean i i believe in it have but um that's kind of kind of where we left it and then I, that i did tell people because I was validated. Other people saw it, so I didn't feel like, right. had, had nobody else seen that, I probably wouldn't have said anything, except for maybe to my meetup family. But um, mm. So then I was like, did you hear on the news? I saw that. So that one I did tell. So, you know, came up conversation, what happened. Is there any military bases close to you guys? Yeah. Yes, there's, um, Johnson County has Fort, well, there's Fort Benjamin Harrison in Indianapolis. Okay. And that's a pretty forested area protected. And then there's Jefferson 
proving grounds, I believe in Johnson County, which is just the county south of us. I go through Johnson to get to Brown County. I can't think of that. What Camp is Atterbury. that? Camp Atterbury. That's yeah, Atterbury. That's the one I was thinking of. And it's huge. Like yeah, it, there's a it, bunch it of them down there. So many miles. It's really huge. And it's I believe mm -hmm. that's in Johnson County as well, which is the immediate county south south of us. It yeah. seems lately that every time someone has an, an encounter or sees a UFO, it's always close to a military base. And I was asking you, I didn't think there was any down there. When you told me there was, it kind of shocked me. Yeah. yeah. Is. yeah there's is huge. There. But Fort Benjamin Harrison is, is really huge, and it's been in Indianapolis forever. But it's literally, it wasn't built, um, Indianapolis wasn't near as big as when it was built. And I don't remember, 20s, 30s, 40s, something like that. Of course, it's grown exponentially, so... Mm -hmm. It's pretty city now, but it's still country in that part area. So, right. yeah, Atterbury is huge, though. And it's mm -hmm. it's fairly close because when they do practice drills with, uh, we hear the noises over here. So it's not too far from us as the crow flies through the country. I still live in the country. I live in a little tiny town that is probably a half a mile by half a mile wide. And as soon as you get out of that little town, it's nothing but country. Yeah, typical Indiana, right? Yep, typical yeah, Indiana. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. I'm just starting to think, I'm starting to think there's some correlation with these military bases and people seeing stuff. I don't know. It's just weird to me. It's almost every time now that we talk to somebody, they live close to a military base. Unless there's that, maybe there's just that many military bases and I just wasn't aware. But it just seems weird no, to me. I would agree with you. I, I, you always, I always listen to them. I try to absorb and take in and learn. Um, and I, I, think that is correct just from listening to the various stories that you know people have out there oh. i had a another encounter that with a ufo and so this would have been probably 86 um it was not in shelby county but it was right on the line between shelby county and marion county um so i was my friend and i a girlfriend and i were going out for the evening my aunt and uncle was going to watch my daughter. Um, she was, I don't know, seven or eight. So we dropped her off and we went to town and, you know, had a few cocktails and had dinner. And then it was late when we got back and we were pulling, they lived way off the road as well, down a, a dirt road. And so we were pulling down that dirt road out in the country, um, but it was right on the line. So it was still the, it was Marion County, but it was still the country. And we saw this, these lights and it wasn't hovering above my aunt and uncle's house. It was like behind in a cornfield and her and I looked at each other and we're like, what is that? We stopped in the middle of the driveway and it was middle of summer, nice warm Indiana night. And we rolled our windows down and we didn't hear a thing because we first thought, well, maybe it's a helicopter because some lights were spinning on it. And so we didn't hear anything. We drove a little closer. And it just hovered there and it was like, I can't, I can't really tell you a color, but by guiding where the lights were at, it appeared to be almost saucer shaped or that kind of, you know, not with a little hump in the middle, but like a circle and the lights were kind of going around. It didn't, it appeared maybe 20 or 30 foot above the home. You know, well, it wasn't above the home, but you know, 20, if at the top of a one story house, 20 or 30 foot above that but behind it, behind the cornfield. Like we, now this scared us to death because I had somebody else that was just as so scared with me. So we left. I didn't even pick up my daughter that night. We backed out. We're like, well, did we, we've had a couple cocktails, but come on. We, you know, I wouldn't have driven if I had too many cocktails. And um, we were, that scared us. So we got back to her house and just didn't know what to think of it. And so the next day I thought, well, maybe it'll be on the news. And it wasn't on the news. So the next day when I went to pick up my daughter, I asked my aunt and uncle, did you hear anything? Did you see anything? And they're like, no. And they thought I was crazy because I said there were some lights above your house. And that's why, which they didn't care if I picked her up that evening or the next morning. But I said, that's why we didn't pick her up because we didn't want to go close to your house. And it was right behind your home. So that was that. And my uncle was like, no, no. So that was my two UFO encounters that I that I have had, both back in the 80s, um, before they were, like I said, before I heard a lot about them. But you heard about them way more right. than you did Bigfoot or anything like that. 
right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's awesome. You've seen two UFOs and a Bigfoot. I no, did. I did. And my friend and I, uh, which we're still friends to this day. In fact, I'll see her next weekend. And we still talk about it. So, you know, we're like, remember we went to pick up your daughter and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And she still remembers it just as well as I do. Probably Get her better. listening to our podcast yet? Uh, I need to have her listen to that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, you might have some other things going on down there. You never know. I mean, it sounds like there's a lot yeah. of activity there. Other people are probably seeing things and not talking very much, you know? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. I always watch the skies out in the country when I'm driving or actually passenger. Um, uh, my daughter lives like 10, 12 miles away in another county and it's country from my house to her house. And until I get to her house, it gets a little more less rural. So I'm constantly just watching the skies. Like, am I going to see something? So did you, I just, I always do that I, too. When I go outside at night, I always yeah. look up. And when you get in the, and when you get away from the city, even if it's a small town, like I live in, the stars are just so much brighter. Mm -hmm. It gets a little darker. Yeah. And I have a little app on my phone that, um, you can point your, phone to the sky and it tell you it tells you what the constellations are yep i have what that the stars are and i think that's amazing as well mm -hmm. a ufo would have to fly right in front of my face for me to to even think i saw one i see <laughs> stuff in the sky all the time and i just don't ever even give it a second oh, it must be a satellite that's yeah, a plane mm -hmm. a satellite it's a star yeah mm -hmm. i don't ever think to look at something that that might seem different i just don't i need okay, to man, i'm always looking up always shame on me <laughs> mm -hmm. I am too, unless, you know, unless of course I'm driving, it's a little harder to do on a country road when you're driving, but passenger as well. I just like when we camp, my husband usually pulls the, pulls the camper. So I'll be the passenger and that gives me a good chance to look like he's driving. Yeah. Well, in Todd's defense, he wasn't a big, he wasn't a UFO person uh, until we really started this podcast, but he's, he's been coming around lately. So. Not that I don't believe, I do. I just never really right. got into it as much for some reason. But right. now it's it seems to maybe tie into to a lot of things, maybe. So you know, trying I to figure it, everything out, you got to look at the whole picture, right? I yeah. think it's a lot more prevalent now than ever, or or, oh, yeah, or maybe sure. people are coming forward. But I mm -hmm. just you know, you hear so much about it. Even maybe not so much locally, but even in Indiana, Ohio, you hear a lot of reports in Ohio. Ohio was huge. It's mm -hmm. huge in UFOs. So that's, it's just a lot more common than I think, than I think we know. Yeah. It's starting yeah. to become that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're seeing it more and more on the news and everything. Right. Right. Well, like I said, at least I got one validation. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like maybe a couple actually with the yeah. Bigfoot, you know, with the yeah. sighting prior. Well, yeah. You had another person verify that one too, cause she saw it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like oh. I said, we, we still talk to this day and we still bring that up. So that's good. Well, Patty, we thank you for talking to us today. And if you get a chance uh, next November, or this coming November, uh, get down to Lexington, Kentucky, and get to the Crypticon convention that's down there. If you're not, you're not too far that away from that. That might have been the one I was thinking about this past November when I said yep. that my grandson's birthday wasn't on that. We, my daughter and I would make a road trip. Yep, that's so. what it was. We go to that one every year, so we're down there. So you can come say hello when you show up. Oh, and great. You'll really great. enjoy it. There's a lot of UFO, a lot of Bigfoot, a lot of everything down there. Absolutely. I'll check that. I couldn't remember the name of it because I was looking up some different um, things. And I looked at the big one in Ohio. I can't think of the name of it, but it's a big ex expo. And it's already sold out. It's like, and I think it's for July or August. I don't remember the date. But it's completely sold out. So I, now I need to make sure I look at the, the one in Lexington so I can get tickets. Yeah. Yeah. They're hard to get into some of the bigger ones. If you yeah. Quick. yeah. The yeah. one in Ohio. Is you got to be fast. Are yeah. you talking about the Salt Fork? Yes. The one that's in Salt what it Fork? Was. Yeah. Yes. We'll be there. We'll be there. We'll be there. Oh, there. gosh. And, you got, and it's mm. sold out. So Because I went online real quick at work and I'm like, oh, oh no, it's sold out. <laughs> I thought they said they were going to do two rounds of ticket sales, though. Maybe not. Well, I'll keep my eye on the yeah, website. Yeah, I would check again. Because yep. this was just one day last week that I checked, and it wasn't. Um, it was like I said; it said sold out. If I can, uh, if we can get a hold of somebody and maybe somehow come across some tickets for you, we'll definitely let you know so you can check it out. We'd like to see you experience that that stuff. It's really cool. Absolutely, it is I fun. Would, they I would yeah, they are fun. That would be great. That would be wonderful. Yep. All right. Will you? Uh, Keep your eyes open down there and you see something else, definitely let us know. Yeah, for sure. Let us know. Absolutely. Great. And thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. 
Well, thank you, Patty. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for being here. All right. Talk to you later. All right. You take okay. care. Bye-bye. You're listening to The Cryptid Creatures Show with Brian and Todd. If you're enjoying the show or would like to submit an encounter, visit our website at www.cryptidcreatures.net or you can email us at info at cryptocreatures.co. Now back to the show. I like Patty. She's uh, She's got a great speaking voice. I yeah, think. she does. Um, she she told a very good story. She did. Uh, the UFO alien stuff, uh, that stuff's weird as well. Yeah, that's some high strangeness right there you going know, on out there in southern Indiana. It is. It is definitely. Maybe they'll bring some of it our, up our way. We'll get to witness that. Who knows? Or, or we just head down there. I mean, it's not that far. Yeah, like we said before, we can drive three, four hours north, or we can drive three, four hours south, and we can be in the middle of a lot of different in, kind of things. Yeah, in any direction. Yeah, in any direction. You're right. <laughs> Yeah. Wild. With that, we'll call it a show and get out of here. I appreciate it hanging out. Yeah, hanging man, out always fun. Always fun. All right, listeners, thanks again. We will see you next time. Brian, my friend, I'll talk to you later. See ya. <laughs>